Hey everybody, welcome to the Infinity Code 1 Battle Report. So today is the first in my series of full Infinity Code 1 games. We're going to be playing 25 point games, um, running through all of the missions from the core rulebook. Now, uh, one by one we're going to go through them, and I'll show you some armies. I'm going to use three different armies um, in the course of this, uh, because Owen, I'm saving the Shaz Vasi for Owen, because that's one of his factions. Um, but I'm going to be using the Winter 4, the White Banner, and O12, and I'll alternate the armies up so you can see some different armies, play some different missions. Uh, but we're going to kick it off with Annihilation. Now this is a classic kill and don't die um, mission, which is taken straight from Infinity and will I'm sure be in Infinity and 4 as well. Uh, where you're trying to preserve your force, so preserve the victory points that you have in your army, your 25 victory points. Um, in this case, but you can play at 15 and 30 as well. And you're also trying to kill as many victory points on the opposing side as, uh, as possible. So there's 10 potential points on the table, um, and they all revolve around not, not being killed while killing. Uh, this is also the one uh, game that does not have a uh, sudden death end state, where um, if you drop below a certain number of points, uh, you will basically like end the game. The game will end on that, the end of that turn. Uh, because it's annihilation, it's about, it's about trying to table your opponent. So this is the one where, like, basically both forces are willing to inflict and sustain a max amount of casualties in an effort to uh, to pull through and win. So I've added some models to my Winter 4 and my um, my uh, White Banner uh, Stir Shut stuff, so it's stuff from Operation Kaldstrom. And I'm also playing on a 3x4 table. Uh, I've also added the, um, I think it's Caldera uh, Scenery Supply Pack, which if you want to go to this game size, if you're looking to expand, um, for instance, if you bought the Beyond Kaldstrom box, uh, you can basically just add one scenery pack and have more than enough train to play, and that's what's recommended for this this table size. Uh, you're going to want three of the train sets um, if you want to uh, to go to the next level. I really do hope they eventually make the Kaldstrom train available separately, like the I think it's Caldera, the, the stuff from Wild uh, from uh, Wildfire, um, because it gives you it, you basically can build each set two different ways. So there's eight or sorry four potential variations um, in terrain that makes your table nice and unique and, and nice looking. I'm playing on a three x four mat. Now this is not available for sale. This is a game mat.eu mat. Um, it's actually a six foot mat that I cut into a three x three and a three x four, and I have like an off cut of like a foot strip because um, I'm using it for different games, and I really liked it. It was super like sort of like perfect for this in, in like setup. Um, so don't ask where I bought it unless you want to buy a six foot mat and cut it in half. Uh, but you could do. If you wanted to make two. If you're very into code one, you want to make two two uh, four by three mats. Just cut a six foot mat in half, and you're ready to rock and roll. So let's show the table. I'll show you the current forces, and I'll get this underway. All right. So here's everything I need to play some 25 point full size games of Infinity Code One. I'm going to walk you through the differences between this and the demo games that we did over the last two weeks um, or the last two episodes. Uh, so first of all, I've upped the game size to 25 points, and what that means is we're playing in a larger table surface. So this 4x3 mat um, is from GameMat.eu, and it's actually half of a 6-foot mat that I cut in half. Now, if you buy a 6x4 mat, you can make two 25-point Infinity Code 1 mats. This one was really fitting for the theme, and I really wanted a 3x3 mat in the same design as well, so I just got some scissors, measured it out, and cut it up, and then just kind of sealed the edge with lighter. Um, but don't, don't expect this to be for sale. This was, I mean, it is. You're you're gonna get two mats, <laughs> um, but it's not uh, it's not cut to this size when you get it. I have two sets of scenery here. I have the Operation Kaldstrom scenery, which you can see, but I've also got the Caldera Governmental Terrain Pack um, available from CB as well, which is recommended as uh, the amount of terrain to have for this game size. So just a second set. You're also gonna get some additional tokens and stuff. They're for N3, but they can be useful. Or you can give them to a friend. Uh, most of them are compatible. Uh, but you get a nice second set of terrain. So you can see where you've got match or not matching buildings. And actually, if you put them together um, uh, two different ways, there's potentially four different terrain layouts for uh, the buildings themselves from the two kits, from the, uh, the Caldera pack and from um, Operation Caldstrom. So it's really nice. You have nice varied terrain. All the buildings are different uh, and it's laid out here in the recommended way. So when you are setting up your own tables, they recommend one, make it asymmetrical. One side should have more buildings than the other, or more high points, so that there is a choice when you uh, roll for deployment, who wants to pick deployment and who wants to pick initiative. Um, and that there's no line of sight between the two deployment zones, if possible. So if people want to hide, they can hide. And that there is some slight potential advantage, like a big building on one side right in the middle, or two smaller buildings in the deployment, uh, for picking sides when you pick deployment. Well, code one rulebook here on my iPads. I've got um, the two last pages, pages 99 and 100 printed off, which are super handy because it's basically a synopsis of everything you can do in the game from the order expenditure and player turn through to the martial arts table um, ammo quick reference the two hacking programs available to hackers and then all the orders you can do in the game that's it that's all there is so once you've got these memorized and what even the page numbers they're on which is super handy 
um, you're ready to rock and roll and play the game. And then I spoke I spoke stupidly in one of the last episodes. I said the Code 1 Army Builder wasn't ready yet. I just hadn't cleared my cookies, and so I was getting a 404 area saying I was access denied because I'm dumb. Um, but I printed off my two armies here. And there are a couple new skills you haven't seen that I'm going to go over in a second, as well as one new rule called All at Once, um, which we didn't do in the demo. So you can see here, this prints you all your weapon tables and your um, stat lines at a glance, which is super handy. Um, and I've got some new models here I've painted up for the two armies. So I'm going to go through the armies right now. I painted up two Svarlaheim Nieces, which are um, multi-spectral advisor level two. One's a hacker, so you can carbonate or target, and then he's, or sorry, uh, spotlight? Yeah, spotlight, to get the targeted state. And the other one's got an HMG. Uh, then I painted up Gunner. He's the troll hunter, who's pretty awesome, and he's got a new skill that you haven't seen called Climbing Plus. And that means the climb skill, which is normally an entire order to go your first move up a surface, he can do as a short skill, which means he can combine it with things like shooting and he can go up the sides of walls and stuff. So he's pretty super fast. Now, another model actually has Climbing Plus in the Opposing Army as well, and I'll go through that in a second. The opposing Army, because they didn't just fighting for me this time. The Kune Sniper also has Climbing Plus. Next skill is Parachutist, which the Tiger Soldier in the Yuching Force has. So the Tiger Soldier Paramedic there, um, it's a hacker model actually, I believe. I can't remember if it's a hacker model or not. It's just got a weird visor. I use a paramedic. It's from uh, Operation Red Veil. Um, and it's, uh, its ability is parachutist. It has airborne deployment. That means it can arrive on any table edge that isn't in a deployment zone uh, of the enemy. So whenever we determine deployment zones, as its entire order, without spending any orders to the order pool, it can just show up touching a table edge, as long as that table edge isn't part of a deployment zone uh, for the enemy. And that's it. That's its order for the turn. So it just shows up on the sidelines. And he's a paramedic, which is pr pretty handy for getting the person where you want him. Now, the only downside side is he doesn't deploy, uh, give his order to the order pool until he arrives, but he uses his own order to arrive uh, during your active turn. Stuff I've added since the last mission, I've added a Hacktow Hacker. He's a huge heavy infantry guy. He's got camouflage, mimetism minus six. He's a hacker. He's BS 14, armor five, BTS six. He's a huge beefy model. He's six points. He's actually the most expensive model on the table. He's even more expensive than the Knight of Justice. Uh, and then Adil, who's the specialist trooper here for the pair, the um, Yuching. Uh, and he's got some cool special rules. He's basically armed with a multi-rifle and um, he has some like uh, martial arts abilities. So uh, he's a special Specialist, he's plus my three to his opponents to hit him with his CC attacks. Marshall is level two, um, and he's got some some sweet breaker combi rifle, which is basically a combi rifle that uses BTS instead of armor and halves as AP against BTS. The last thing to note is that both Fusiliers and all three Zanchis have been upgraded to be paramedics, which means they all have med kits, which is super handy for bringing people back to life and also makes them specialists for the purposes of mission objectives. We're playing Annihilation, and that means that basically in this mission we are trying to conserve points and earn points. Uh, earn points by killing, conserve points by not dying, and then if the enemy uh, lieutenant is dead at the end of the game, you're going to get two extra bonus objective points for that. So ten on the table, two for killing the enemy uh, lieutenant, who we wouldn't reveal to each other, but obviously I know that's going to be the orc troop um, and the Dao Fei. And then on top of that, um, if you kill 25% uh, of points, so basically 7.5 uh, to 13, I think it is, or 12 and a half? This is 25 points, so it's up to 12 and a half, yeah. So if you, if you get 7 to 12.5 points dead, uh, you get at one point, you get three point, or two points for killing um, uh, up to 75%. I think. Read it, Ash. Yeah, 7 to 12.5 is 1, uh, 13 to 21 is 3, and then more than 21 is 4. And then it's the same thing for surviving. If uh, 7 to 12.5 survive, it's 1. Um, if 13 to 21, it's 3. And then if more than 21 survive, it's 4. So potentially 10 points on the table for killing and surviving. Um, and that's our mission. So let's make a deployment roll. So willpower 12 for the orc and 13 for the Dao Fei. Uh, 5 and a 7, the Dao Fei wins. They're going to choose to go first because they like fighting fast. Uh, and that means with deployment, um, the panel player will make the Yuching player deploy first and deploy on, uh, let's say, this table edge. In full games deployment, you get one reserve model. So the Yuching player is going to opt not to deploy the Hack Tau, as he's a pretty big killy piece. He's pretty important, and deploy everything else. Uh, the Dao Fei and the Gui Lang Skirmisher both have infiltrate still, so they can deploy up to half the table, and everybody else deploys inside 12. Using a fairly aggressive posture, the Dao Fei is going to deploy up here in cover with the Gui Lang Skirmisher kind of in the open, but moving behind a big building, so hopefully at a line of fire. Uh, the Jujak again, also fairly aggressive in the open, standing up, uh, along with the Paramedic Zan Shi and Dill. Now we got a Paramedic Zan Shi Pro next to the Hundun Sniper, um, as that will allow to hopefully rescue him if he gets into trouble. And then this Zan Shi Par uh, Paramedic on the ground, ready to support the Jujak if he gets wounded. I know player holding back the Knight of Justice, 
this, we got the Kune Sniper over here, getting an eyeball on these two camo markers. The Noct Troop with his advanced deployment, hanging out in that stairwell. I'm watching this side for paratroops. And then we have the um, MSV-2 uh, Nice Hacker, along with the paramedic um, Fusilier. We got Gunner, we got the HMG Nice, along with the Orc and the Infirmary, and the last paramedic on the flank. Well, the deploy is gonna be the Hacktow, and this looks like a pretty safe spot to be. So dropping him right there. Knight of Justice doing much the same thing, hiding in a safe spot for the first turn. One, nine orders in the order pool because the Tiger Soldier, of course, off table to be in. And uh, Yu Ching has to make the first play. Notice that most of the Fusiliers and sort of like light troops and even the heavier troops from Pano are hiding. That's because it's always, al almost always better to force your opponent to waste orders getting to you in a, in a first turn of a game. And then you can pick where the engagements take place. The only exception to that is the Kune Sniper right now is hanging out up top, but playing him and checking with other camo markers isn't a huge deal. Distinct lack of visors, except for the Gui Lang. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see. I think that's the play for the Yu Chang. They need to neutralize this sniper before they move forward. Get there, he's kind of pincered in between the knock and the sniper. So the almost best option here is actually to go around. So that is the paratroop could take care of it if the paratroop can arrive out of line of sight. I'm not sure they can though. Looks like they can. So using their own order, the paratrooper is going to just arrive right here. Now the option is to dodge because it's inside of the zone of control of the marker, but that would reveal it. So it's really not a lot of point. It's real order, just sliding up slightly. Staying out of line of fire of this, but in line of fire of the knock. Knock has to choose. He's got to shoot at mimetism plus cover against the Tiger Soldier with a boarding shotgun that's at zero range. So we're talking about a zero for range, minus six for camouflage and cover. He's looking at rolling a six to hit. He's probably better off dodging. Dodging on a 10, and you have to eat three shots from a combi rifle. He's minus nine, but plus three. So that's gonna be on sevens, seven to 10. The six will hit, but the eight will successfully dodge. And that makes sense to push the knock back to here, two inches. And just maintain, uh, or get it a line of sight, but maintain um, basically pincering with the, the sniper. I'm gonna get some tricks here, because if this uh, cam marker comes in line of fire, that sniper is probably gonna dodge on top of it. Well, I think it's time to unleash the Gui Lang. He's gonna take a walk and go forward to here, stay line of fire the knock. Now does the sniper, is it a good idea for the sniper to, to try and do this? Now, he'll be at minus nine, actually he'll be at minus six because he's got a visor if he decides to reveal and discover. Uh, it'll be cover and mimetism of three. So his willpower is 13, I think, 14. He's gonna need an eight, maybe a seven. Is that something we're willing to gamble on? I think it is. Delay, because he can delay. And then if he discovers, actually he could shoot. The marker declaring a reaction against the marker. So I think, yeah, I think, I think they just move again. Oh, but if he sees him, he'll get a chance to try and see. Mm. Do we do it? Yeah, I think we do it. We just move to here. Give that knock a chance to see us. Minus three for cover, minus three for camo. The knock has no special visors or anything like that. And I think he's only willpower 12, yeah, actually. So, minus six, he needs a seven or less to spot that Gui Lang. Five, he does! Unlucky for the Gui Lang, but does not trigger an ARO here because he just did a second skill move. Next order easy, he's gonna idle. And I think just turn to face everybody. So he has to declare now if he's gonna shoot. He's just gonna, uh, gonna idle, I think. And the knock's gonna shoot him with a boarding shotgun. So he'll use the template attack to reduce some armor. Uh, so that's going to be plus six minus six, because he's got mimetism and cover, versus plus uh, six minus nine. So the Gwilang is going to get two shots on eights versus one shot on a 12. Two on eights versus one on 12. 13 is going to miss, but the one will hit. So that's going to project out a template, because it's a directional template. Won't hit anybody else, though. But it will reduce his cover to zero. Two against damage 14, that's for beat 12. Unconscious. Going pretty good for the Gwilang now. Give another order. Let's see if we can get with an eight. He's gonna skip over to this other cover, stay line instead of everybody else. So he has to hope. Does he wanna try and get this guy out of cover shooting outside of eight? Or does he think he's gonna flub the roll? I don't think we chance flubbing the roll. He'll be at minus nine, he'll be at minus six overall. Maybe at plus three actually now. He'll be at minus three. He'd be on eleven. Let's reveal and take the shot. Shooting him outside of eight for a zero mod, minus three for mimetism. He'll be shooting back at minus nine plus six, so minus three. So that's gonna be on an eight 
and he'll also be on an eight. Material round for the uh, Ninja on an eight versus two boarding shotgun template shots on an eight. 14 will miss, two will hit, uh-oh, armor one. No model, no cover um, mod here because it's a template, because again, that'll ignore the cover mod. So he has to beat a 14, uh, 13 because of the armor one. 10, it's unconscious. Two links on a rampage, oh, shush. Five orders left. Get some models out of the wind right now, at least three of them. So let's start by doing that. And that means we want to get this Jujak moving. He can move eight. So he's going to move up six to the edge here. And then two more. Five, everyone. Uh, we're going to give one to this Hacktow, obviously. He's just going to move to the edge and idle. Just in there. One to a dill. He's gonna come to the edge. And then one more to this Fusilier. Or not Fusilier Zanchi. He's gonna come to the edge as well. And actually hang out closer to him. In regular order and Lieutenant Order left. We're pretty happy with this turn. He's in the wind. He needs to get out of there now and camp somewhere safe. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna move, move, and just sit here with his boarding shotgun. And then do we, I think we reveal our lieutenant and with no one in line of fire, we just move backwards and go prone. And that's turn one. Took a big chunk, got the knock out of there. Managed to kill the sniper. Not too bad. One pano, time to get some revenge. All right, how do we plan on doing that? I guess is the question. Uh, so order count, we have one, we had 10, we have eight left. Two, four, six, eight. Uh, because two models are now unconscious. Things first, we have to dislodge the Guilang and this uh, this fella. And the best bets to do that is somebody with a visor. Uh, we have a visor on you. We also have a visor on the HMG. We're gonna go with the HMG. Go to the knees. He's gonna walk four and just come to the edge here. And then he's gonna hurdle this to be in cover. Second order, he's gonna come down the steps so that he can see Mr. Boarding Shotgun. He's shooting at Mimetism of three, cover of three, and bad range of three. So minus nine. So he'd be shooting on a two. So he's probably better off to dodge. Dodging on a 12. The HMG is going to be at plus three for range if he's outside of 16. He is not. He should have gone up the stairs instead of down them. <laughs> but you don't want to get line of fire to the Hundun. So that's going to be um, plus three for, sorry, zero, minus three for mimetism, but that goes away from his visor, minus three for cover, and then zero for range. So four shots on tens. Four on tens versus one on 12. Five, uh, three twenties is bad, and so is a 14. So he'll dodge and just get it on a fire. Not what we wanted, third order, we gotta deal with that hundun now. So stepping back and hugging the wall to stay in cover until we can see it. Well, definitely gonna play a game of chicken, try and force the discover roll. Within 32, so minus three for cover and minus three for um, for uh, for range. Zero up to 32. Uh, I thought it was minus three, but it said 24. So zero, uh, minus three for cover. So that's whip 10 to try and see him. Fails, so you can't try and see him again either. Second verse, same as the first, I guess. Uh, another order. And we're gonna go take a walk, I think, with this niece. And just move four around the corner. Skill, I think we're gonna try and discuss, we're gonna try and target. So uh, the Gwilin can attempt to reset. It'll be willpower 14 versus willpower 13. See if we can do it, first one. Uh, so fails with the 19 and passes the reset. So no bonus targeted state here. Gonna run him. He's just gonna come around the corner to be able to see. So the Gwilin's pretty happy to fire his boarding shotgun at him, plus six to hit. Uh, he'll use the template too, cause it'll splash that knock and uh, minus three for cover, minus three for mimetism. So that's gonna be a grand total of 11 uh, versus uh, him shooting back. He'll be at plus three for range, minus three for mimetism and, sorry, minus nothing for mimetism uh, and minus three for cover. So it'll be on 13. So three shots to the cover if on 13 versus one shot on an 11. Uh, criticals <laughs> and cancels all these. So two armor rolls, he's armor three goes to six versus the boarding shot. Actually, he doesn't get any six for the cover. So there's boarding shotgun armor three. Uh, 20 will pass, the other one will fail, unconscious. And then a template hit against him, armor two, he passes. They're not going well, all right, let's try again. So we'll have the Fusilier walk over here. And then second short skill, shoot a med kit at plus three for range. He misses. So we'll take another order and back up 
but then shoot him again with a med kit, a plus three for range. And hit. All right, well, physical of a niece is, I believe, 10, 12 or less, who so come back to life. He's dead. Good job. So you did nothing that we wanted to do right now. So I guess we even deal with this. We have a lieutenant order and order left. We know the York's lieutenant. Um, I guess we spend this order to try and bring the knockback just to pin these guys. So walk to here and then back a little bit. He'll take his shot. He will be, actually he could come to within eight. So just come to within eight. No, he won't, he'll stay back. Do it on zero, 12 or less. Does he hit him? He does. This is 10. He's back, sweet, just prone. 10 order, I think the orc just moves over to this side to hold this corner, and that's turn. Certainly could have gone better. <laughs> we brought back the knock, but we lost a niece in the process. Order count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because of the Daofei. Oh, we didn't lose anybody. Easy stuff, first order on the Tiger Soldier, just gonna dip out slightly to see the, uh, this fella. He, I think, is going to try and dodge, because he'll be at plus three with his, sorry, zero minus six. He'll be on a six to hit, or a ten to dodge. Ten to dodge, he'll be at plus three for range, minus nine, so he'll be on a uh, seven to hit with his combi rifle. So seven to ten. Uh, misses, and the one hits. Oh, one in a million shot, boss. So armor two goes to five because of the cover. Uh, it needs to beat an eight. He's good again. Seven to ten, he's going to dodge again. Uh, everyone misses. It's the third time. This guy's got to get dislodged. Uh, eight will miss. Five will hit. Has to beat an eight one more time. He does. Fourth order going for it again. Uh, the three will pass and then beat the two. So he gets the dodge and get himself even further up. He has to move two inches to there. Get himself unprone because why not? That way he can see this Guilang. Well, does the Greenlight just rush him? No, the Greenlight wants to, to do other things. This Tiger Soldier's got to take care of this. Good buddy. 7 to 10. Uh, fails and hits twice. All right, he has to beat an 8 twice now, this knock troop. And he fails twice and just dies. Is the Greenlight what he wanted? He can start moving around, but I think he's going to wait. And we're going to walk forward to here with the Dao Fei. We have to delay here, uh, but um, the Dao is gonna reveal himself and get surprised. So he won't get his, his modifier for being a um, uh, camel marker, but he will get the surprise shot, no cover either. So it'll be plus three for range, minus three for surprise. So one HMG shot on a 13. Uh, he's gonna get his Spitfire, but he's gonna be in the open against it. So plus three for range, minus three for cover. So four shots on 13s. Four shots on 13s versus one shot back on a 13. That's a two, and everything else cancels it. So six, six, five, eight. So he gets hit four times in Spitfire at armor three. He's beaten 11. He does four times. I guess we reveal we're Lieutenant and try that again. Surprise now though, uh, but he is in cover. So it'll just balance out and it's 13 against 13 one more time. A four gets canceled by all this. So that's three hits. Nope, two hits actually, because the four cancels the two. Armor three, does he beat it? Nope, he goes unconscious. He's watching this corner, so it feels like it's down to... Hmm, the hack tile to come around. We have four orders left to get the hack tile up there. He spent one though, to... He's not prone right now, to turn him back into a cow marker. Because we're always safer when we're a lieutenant and we're a cow marker. I think we start getting the hack tile in the war. So he's gonna come up, staying at a line of fire, just going eight. To here, another one to do much the same thing. Just hugging this wall, staying out of line of fire. Last order. I think we come to the edge and just idle. What do you want to do there, orc boy? He'd be, oh, he'd be so penalized. And the orc's going to dodge. Yeah, because he'd be at minus 12, so you might as well just dodge on a 14. So one dodge on a 14. The hacktail hacker will reveal himself. And he'll get three shots at 14, because it's plus three for range, minus three for cover. Three 14s versus one 14 dodge. Uh, the 10 is going to cancel everything, and the orc dodges out of the way, gets on on fire, opens up his options. The visor's down, this is bad news bears for pretty much all the Pano guys. The order count, what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. I feel like the Night Justice has to deal with this, so we're going to give her an order, and she's just going to walk her six to here. 
and not move with the two because she needs to stay on a fire. And she's just gonna come to here with the next order. The hawker's gonna blast her. In line of fire, it's out of eight though. So plus three for range, minus three for cover, so 14s. Uh, same thing here, plus three, plus three. So four shots with a Spitfire versus one AP shot with a multi-rifle. And not in range to hack, so 14 to 14. Uh, 16's a miss, he eats four rounds at armor eight though, so six or less to fail these rolls. This is damage 14 with no special rolls. Oh, two and a five, two wounds unconscious. I believe that's what we call Knightly justice. Well, that's gonna necessitate some other things here. So uh, I think we give our next order to the infirmer or the doctor, yeah, the infirmer. And he's gonna move four, just around the corner here, staying in line of fire. Four again to here, staying in line of fire. He's gonna go prone, because he needs to go prone to do this. She's gonna get shot and crawl up the stairs to this guy. So willpower does to medic him on a 13 or less. He does, he's back up, but he's prone. Well. I think, hmm, do we stand up and try and shoot the Dao Fei? We're prone right now, we're happy where we are. We have two orders of Lieutenant Order left. We really need to dislodge all this. I think we go with Night Justice. And she's gonna move to the edge. And as she does so, she's gonna riddle the corpse of this guy. We'll do it from when she's back here, so just cover. Uh, that's two hits. Does he feel an armor roll? He does, and he's dead, because we don't want him coming back. Last regular order. Do we charge in here? They're both gonna see us. Hold our ground, and we go with the knees. And knees stands up, and walks to here. Hundon try and take the free shot. He'll be in the open. I think we do. I think we take the bob, but he'll shoot back. He'd be in the open, he'd be at Flat dice, 13s. She'd be at plus three, minus his mimetism, so flat dice as well, so 13s. I think we just hold off and make him force discover. Zero for range, uh, and minus three for cover, so he needs a 10. He fails. Her and the orc, just gonna come to the edge, I think, because now we that scary hack has gone. And that looks like round two. All right, well, we're into top of three. Things are looking pretty grim right now for the Pano. They've lost a grand total of five points of models. If they lose another expensive model, it's big trouble. But Yu Ching's lost 11 points. It's a big lead right now, army point wise, and I think the Yu Ching needs a big turn to, to make this up. Six points, army wise. Uh, and actually, sorry, they've lost eight points. So they're over the threshold. They've given up a point so far. Um, and uh, yeah, it's six points down right now for Yu Ching. Orders and a lieutenant order in the order pool. Hacktown's done. But there's still plenty of things left to do. Start off with idling with the Hundun. I think we'll delay our over here because we know what's coming. And there's gonna be a surprise shot from the Hundun into that niece. So two shots at minus six plus three, so on tens, uh, versus a single shot back on a 13, plus three for range, minus three for cover. That's a four versus a nine, so it takes a hit. Uh, armor three goes down to two, plus three for cover. So it has to beat a 10, damage 15. No one conscious again. One's paying our paycheck. Uh, so the deal is now, how do we deal with this night of justice? I think the answer is we apply shotgun. So, Queenling Skirmisher, just gonna come around. Oh geez, no, we'll see the orc. Well, too late now. Come around. And might as well come all the way around. Smart, I would have re-camoed first for an order and then come around as a camo marker so the orc couldn't shoot me. But the orc can take a shot. Uh, it'll be at minus three for uh, camo. And then I guess the Night of Justice is gonna try and dodge to engage. Uh, 14, uh, one shot at minus three, plus three. So that's gonna be on a 14 as well. And then we'll split our fire. Do I wanna split our fire? Now I'll just put everything into her. Propose shot on a 14. Hits, armor one, laughs, uh, and then shooting back. So a single dodge on a 14 versus two shots on 17s so with a boring shotgun using AP rounds. Crits and cancels the 12. She has to make two armor rolls at half armor. Five goes to three versus damage 14. So she's beat 11 twice. Whoa, she's just unconscious. Good job, Guilang. Incredibly long odds play that paid off. Uh, and I think the Gui Lang just continues the murder spree. Order, gonna walk four inches, just be out in the open, might as well. 
What's up, nerd? Dodge on 10 or shoot on a 15. Might as well shoot on a 15 versus two more shots on 17 with the boarding shotgun. Actually, sorry, it'll be on a 12 because it is, uh, maybe it doesn't. Uh, so 15 will hit and cancel the 12, but the 12 is a crit. So the crit's gonna do two armor rolls. Uh, armor one against damage 13. 14, 14, passes. Relaying is invincible, another order. Might as well just, just stay here and stay alive and fire gunner. Uh, shooting back at a 12 versus two shots on 17s. Uh, 13 will hit, and then armor one against damage 14. Passes. These idiots just dancing around. Uh, continues to walk, I guess, in behind, because why not? And shoots on the way. So two more on 17s against one on 12. Turn out, yeah, 17s. Uh, the 19 will miss. The 6 will get cancelled by the 11. He takes another round. So, once again, 13 goes to 12. Beat a, be a 12. He does? Oh my god. I might as well keep going. Two shots on 17s. Uh, he'll come to the edge here. One on a 12. Another hit. And then it's armor 1 against a 14. No, he's unconscious. Just keep this going. Go after Gunner. So walk to here to just see Gunner and not the Orc. Uh, it'll be plus 6 minus 3 for cover. And he'll use a template. So that's going to hit on a... Uh, 14 now. Gunner could chain Colt back, and I think that's what Gunner does, or he could dodge to engage. Do we dodge to engage? We dodge on a 14 or 13? Dodge on a 14. I think we do the dodge, uh, because it'll be straight up 14s against 14s, and we'll just run over there and smack him. No! 17 misses! Two hits from boarding shotgun. Alright, so just armor two. Uh, no cover because of the template. And he's just dead. I guess we use the lieutenant order on him, and he's gonna slide out to see this infirmer air, who I guess will try and dodge. Delay and shoot back, he's only got a combi rifle, so it's gonna be super bad mods, so he'll just try and dodge on a 10. And he's gonna get spitfired by the Dafe. The point here is they're so low on orders that the Yuching might as well just press the advantage and strip the order pool so low that there's no final turn available. They're basically down to just these two models, and there's no uh, cancel it option in this mission because there's the, we're fighting to the death. So the is gonna get four shots plus three minus nothing because the uh, infirmary is in the open now. And that's gonna hit on a 16. Dodge on a 10. 11 will fail, and the 18 will fail, so three hits at damage 14 against armor 2, I believe, for the infirmary. 12! Uh, one gets through and knocks him out. He's unconscious. That's just the orc left. Alright, Gulang, re-camo, because you might as well. So turn back into a camo marker, because you're out of line of fire. And you have one order left to Hail Mary this. What's the downside? There's literally no downside here, but you might get the lieutenant kills. So you might as well just move your four. Straight ahead, just going to the open. Might as well delay because he knows what's coming. And then it's shotgun time. He's inside eight. Uh, he'll use a template. Uh, it's a template, but yeah, template's better in this case than using AP. And he'll be at plus three overall, so 14s with two shots. Uh, the orc will try and shoot back with his multi rifle at plus three. Minus three for surprise, minus three for camo, or sorry, for mimetism, so minus six. So he'll be at 11s to 14s. Does he get it? Uh, no, that's a nine. That'll cancel the three though, and the 13 will just barely hit. So it won't kill him, but does he take a wound? Uh, it's armor two, because it's, uh, actually it's armor four, but no cover because of the template. 15, he left. Turn, off, turn three pan O. There's two models left, so two regular orders, and one's lieutenant. What can they do here? It's not in line of fire to bring anybody back, so really the only play right now, I think, is the orc tries to kill the squeal line. So he's the lieutenant order to do it, so he's just gonna idle. And I guess, do we try and shoot? Might as well try and shoot back. So 14, once again, from the boarding shotgun, plus six, minus three for cover, uh, to two shots at plus three, no surprise anymore. So minus three for mimetism, and that's it. Well, the three might hit, but the 11 cancels it, so he has to make another armor roll. Ha, plus two. He's okay. Uh, second last order, he'll try again. One more die. 13. Uh, so he's going to need 14s, so everything hits this time around. The 17's a mess. Three armor rolls. He's dead. Generators left, but there's no way to get anybody in line of fire, and so now we do the count. Pretty simple, there's four points remaining, um, which means that uh, there's zero points scored right now for Pano. They get nothing for survivors, and nothing, and well, they might get something for kills. No, they killed a Hacktow, 
four, six, and they didn't kill anything else. Mine, sorry, they killed the Guilang. So six plus the Hacta or the Guilang costs two, so that's gonna be eight. So they get one point for kills. Uh, Yuching gets four points for survivors. They have 21, sorry, they have less than 21. They got eight points for kills. They have 17 left. So they're gonna get three points for survivors, but then they killed all but four points, which means they killed 21 or more. Um, and that means that they're gonna get four points for kills. So it takes them to seven. Didn't get the lieutenant though. So seven to one for Yu Ching. So there you go, end of the game, um, Annihilation. It's a really simple mission, kill and don't be killed. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of value in that lesson for Infinity where you spend the first half of yours trying to figure out what you're trying to accomplish that round and the second half figuring out um, where you wanna be. So <clears throat> important things like the Daofei moving back out of line of sight of the prone model um, and uh, getting himself back into camo, the Hun Dun judiciously holding off um, taking ARO shots in order to waste opponent orders uh, and things like just pulling back with models when they're a bit in the wind um, or getting them, you know, even stopping your assault to move models up into cover can pay off big time in the, in the long run. So uh, big thanks for watching. Next week we're gonna do Domination where we're gonna bring out the O12 and they're gonna fight against Yu Ching. That's a four part series. I'm gonna go through all the core missions from um, Code 1 uh, so you guys can check them out. So we're gonna alternate armies uh, so you guys can see uh, different different factions playing and um, we'll go through the missions and you can get a general idea of tactics, how the armies work um, and how they would try and accomplish those objectives. So see you next time in two weeks for Domination to Lena Mash. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathrite Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future, who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.